Hey, what's up? Jason here. In this video, I'm going to go over how to hook up the Vive Trackers pogo pins right back here. So if you haven't used these before, they let you kind of act as buttons or triggers. So you can hook this up to a you know cheap little gun that you build or whatever you want and then hook up a little switch. You know, get a little $2 switch at the store and hook that up to be your trigger or your grip button or your menu button. Uh, you can also do haptic feedback off of these. You can send out the, the haptic signal and then push that into another controller that uses a motor. I don't think I'm going to do that today though, just the input stuff. So to get started, I've got an empty project here with just the Steam VR camera rig. And what I want to do is add a child here for the tracker. So I'll just create an empty tracker object. And I want to add a track to object component. Right. Oh, sorry, I added the wrong one remove that and add a tracked object and then the index here doesn't matter it gets set at runtime so you can just leave it at HMD or you can set it to none if it really bothers you uh, next I need to go into the camera rig though and you see here we have on the controller manager there's an array of objects and this one was already set because I'd played with it a little before what I need to do is drag the tracker into this object array what that's going to do is just make the manager initialize this thing and start tracking it. There is a little issue where if you don't have both controllers turned on with the default controller manager here, it won't track the other objects. So if you're doing this, make sure that those are both on or I'll post a link on how to fix that so that you can have the objects still track without the controllers or with, with just one on or whatever you have. So with that assigned, I want to go in and just add a child under here that's a cube, just so I can keep an eye on this thing and know where it's at. Kind of like to watch and see my thing move around. I'm just going to hit play and make sure this tracks before we jump into the pins. So let's see, there we go. It's, it's, I'm moving it here and you can see it changing on there. Cool. Uh, next step, we're going to add this little script that I created. It's just called trigger tester. It doesn't just test the trigger. It actually tests the trigger, the trackpad, the grip, and the menu. So if you look here, I've just got four Boolean fields for the trigger, trackpad, grip, and menu. In start, we cache the tracked object. That's just the other component that's on this thing. And then in the update, we get the device based off of the tracked object's index. And then we call get press for the different buttons and assign that to the bool. So this is just going to set these to true if we've pressed any of those buttons, if they're down right now this frame. So there's the trigger, the grip, the touchpad, and the application menu. All right, so if I jump back over here and press play, what I'm going to do is take these two wires, which is actually just connected in to be one big long wire, and I'm going to touch the pins I'm going to touch pin 2 and pin 4 first. So pin 2 is just 2 over from my finger right here, and then 4 is 4 over. And those, if you look at the little spec sheet, line up to be the trigger. So when I touch these down, it's going to short them, and we should see the trigger set to true. There we go. Oh, see it? It just went to true. So it just got checked. Now if I touch pin 2 and 3, that's the grip. Then I think 5 is trackpad and six is the menu. So let me kind of zoom in so you can get a good idea of what this looks like. Let's see if I can get a good shot here. This might be hard with uh, my camera set up. There you go, I think you can see that. So all I'm doing is just touching pin two and four and then you see as I touch it goes on and off and then same with all these other pins they just line up to another button there so that's all you really need to do you can just hook up a a switch or something you know whatever device you have hook them up to these and then you can use this tracker as you know part of a cooler gun or other tracked device that you want to have that's not just a regular old controller. So and then if you want to do that too, I'd also recommend that there are some attachments that you can put onto here that make it so it's not little tiny buttons that are hard to get at. You can print them on uh what does that say? Thingverse 
or I think there are a couple that you can just order online that are just little attachments to make it a little bit easier to, to interact with these things. Um, that's kind of the basics. I think pin one was for haptic feedback. You can actually get output on there. Like I said, I don't think I want to cover that in this one because it's a bit more complicated. You don't want to just run a motor off of that pin. I think it's very unlikely that this thing is built to run an actual motor. So cool. So that's everything with the Pogo pins. Uh, go ahead and give it a try. I think it's pretty safe. Have fun if you build something cool. You know, make sure to share it. Let me know. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and hit subscribe. Thanks again.